Welcome to the Recording with Audacity tutorial. Last time I showed you how to set up Audacity, so let's open it up. In the last video, we put the program in our Applications folder. If you're on a Windows system, it may be in your Programs folder. But as we know, Audacity is a totally self-contained standalone program that can work from wherever you put it. So let's navigate to the folder that it lives in on your computer. Here we are. Now, in the future, I'm not going to want to do all this work to find this program again. So to make it easier, I'm going to drag this icon to my dock. This will create a shortcut, so I'll have it at the ready all the time. If you're on a Windows machine, you can right-click this icon, and from the little menu that pops up, you can choose Send to Desktop. That will create a shortcut icon on your computer's home screen. Okay, now let's close this window and click our newly created shortcut icon and open up Audacity. As I mentioned last time, whenever you open up the Audacity program, you're going to see this little welcome screen. You can shut it off for good if you want by clicking this little box, but I recommend leaving it as it is for now until you're totally used to the program. It has some cool links on it to tutorials and stuff that you might need. By default, Audacity wants to use the microphone that's built into your computer. I do not recommend this. Your computer's mic, or onboard mic as it's sometimes called, is nowhere near the quality that you need to record and submit any kind of competitive audition tracks. You definitely want to invest in another microphone. There are some very good, inexpensive mics out there that will give you what you need. I'm using a microphone called a Meteor. It's made by a company called Samson. It's a very good quality microphone for recording voiceover auditions, but there are a number of other mics out there that will give you excellent quality, and a lot of them are very reasonably priced. So do some research. I'm sure if you poke around online for a little bit, you'll find a number of really great options. Anyway, once we have our microphone, we want to set it as the default audio input source. And in this case, we do that by clicking Audacity up in the overhead menu. And from the drop down menu, we choose Preferences. That opens up this window. You may recognize it from the tutorial on setting up Audacity. This time, we're going to choose the Devices option. If it's not already selected, which in this case it is, you can click it once to select it and it will give you some options that deal with how Audacity records and plays back your reads. Here we see the host option and we see that core audio is selected. This may be your only option, which is fine. That just means you're recording from your computer's built-in sound card. Unless you've chosen to add an external sound card in the form of a DigiDesign M-Box or something like that, the default that you have here should be just fine. Playback deals with how Audacity plays our recordings back to us. You'll most likely see built-in output as a default. That means it'll play your tracks back through your computer's built-in speakers or headphones if you're using them. Other options may show up, and those will vary based on your computer. I even have an option here to choose my microphone as a playback device, because the Meteor, like many other USB microphones, allows me to plug my headphones directly into it. But I'm going to leave the default settings for now. And here we have the most important section of all. This is the source that Audacity will be recording from. By default, it chooses your computer's built-in microphone. Again, I can't stress this enough. We do not want the computer's built-in microphone. The quality is just not good enough. We've got to pick another microphone if we're going to get a job. We have the built-in input option, which is that little jack on the side of your computer. If you have something decent that utilizes that, then you can choose it. But I'm going to go with my handy-dandy Meteor. And this tells Audacity to record mono or stereo, or as I call it, one track or two. 
In my opinion, there's no reason to record a voice track in stereo. The voice is a mono instrument, and the stereo option just unnecessarily doubles the file size. But, hey, choose whatever floats your voiceover boat. Okay, now that you have all of your defaults set, you're ready to record. I'm going to close this by clicking OK. Now, let's talk about the interface for a second, because for voiceover auditions, there are areas that you do need to care about and areas that you don't. This is your transport window. I'm sure you've seen this in other editing programs. Here you have the basic record, stop, play, and pause. And if you ever forget which what, which I can't imagine happening, but you never know, you just have to hover over any button with your cursor, and this nifty little tooltip, as they're called, will appear and solve the mystery for you. And these two buttons here are kind of neat. They're not active now because we haven't recorded anything yet, but these two little guys here will jump your cursor to the beginning or end of your track. Over here, we have a couple of little sliders. This one will control the volume of what's going into Audacity and being recorded. You can hear the change as I move it. And this one adjusts the volume of what is being played back. As I slide it, you can hear that it doesn't affect your input. This one greatly affects what's being recorded, and this one, not so much. These meters work with the sliders. This one shows how loud you sound to the program. As a general rule, you want to stay within this general area here. Too low and your recording may be too quiet, much more, and your file can sound distorted. It may jump outside of this area for like a millisecond every once in a while. That's no biggie, but if it's much more than that, you may want to adjust your volume slider. This meter tells you how the playback sounds to you. It has no effect on the track, but if on playback your track sounds like super low or super high and distorted, before you assume it's a bad track, look here. Your playback slider may need to be adjusted. And these here are your editing tools. They're pretty much useless unless you've actually recorded something, so we'll ignore them for right now and revisit them in the next tutorial on editing. And these are your viewing tools. We'll talk about them in a little bit when we actually have something to view. Okay, let's record something. I'll click the record button and you'll see a timeline appear in this empty space down here. Okay, here we are. We can see based on the blue waveforms that are showing up that we are recording right now. Here you can see that the input level meter is about where it's supposed to be between one half and three quarters. This little blue line marks the maximum volume that you hit while you're recording. It's also called the peak volume. And the reason that you're only seeing this in one channel is because we chose to record this in mono. If we had chosen stereo, both the left and right meters would be there. And now we can click stop. And there you have it. You have just created your first track in Audacity. You can use this slider to move the waveform back and forth. You can jump to the beginning of your track with this button or the end of your track with this button. And now we can talk about the viewing tools. You can use this button here to shrink or enlarge your waveform to fit the whole editing space. You can zoom out with this button or zoom in with this one. These buttons are cursor based. Anytime you zoom in or out, Audacity will do its best to keep your cursor or place of interest as a midpoint. And if we've selected a particular section of our audio by holding our mouse button down and dragging the cursor over the area we want, because maybe we want to edit it or cut it or copy it or something like that, these buttons will zoom in or out keeping our selection as a point of focus. And this button will take whatever you've selected and resize it to fit your editing area. All right, now let's play it back. We'll jump to the beginning with this button and we'll hit play. Anytime you zoom in or zoom out, we see our playback levels jumping around here. 
I know what you're thinking. Why are both the left and right channels showing up in the playback meter? Well, I'll tell you. Even if you've only recorded one channel, Audacity will always play back through both. That way you don't end up only hearing your track in one ear, which would be distracting and obnoxious. We'll address editing in another video. But since in this case you were awesome and gave a flawless read which requires no fixing whatsoever, we're ready to export our brilliant, perfect audio file. Because we were smart enough to install the lame MP3 encoder in the last tutorial, getting up and running with Audacity, we're ready to save the file in the form that most people will want it, MP3. To do that, we go to the overhead menu, we choose File, from the drop-down menu, we choose Export. Export selection would only be relevant if you had clicked and dragged and chosen a segment of your recording to export. Okay, so click Export to export the whole file. You'll name it. We'll choose where we want to save it. I like to save to the desktop, but you can choose another place from this drop-down or by clicking this button to see all of your folders and subfolders. I'll note that the format says MP3. If I wanted to choose another format, this drop-down is where I'd do it from. Now, before we do our export, I want to talk about this button here. Unlike some other file formats, the MP3 format offers you some options that affect the quality of your exported file. I won't dwell on the technical whys or hows of these settings. There are plenty of places on the web that'll explain these in detail if you really want to know. I'm just going to advise you as to what, in my humble opinion, the best settings are. Bitrate mode. It will probably default to constant. That's fine, you can just leave it there. If it's not selected by default, you can select it now. The quality will probably default to 128, which is fine. That's basically the quality of a music CD. I usually jump it up to 192 because I'm just that kind of guy, although I can't swear that anybody has actually ever really heard a difference. Maybe they have, maybe they haven't. I don't know. It's there for a reason. But I figure it can't hurt. Some online sites prefer you go down to 96. That's a little low for my taste, but hey, they're the boss. So if you do need to change it, you do it here. Variable speed. If you've chosen a constant bitrate as I suggested, fast will be your only option, so no worries. If you've chosen something else like variable or preset, you'll also have an option to choose standard as a speed. Either way, fast is fine for voiceover, so again, no worries. And your channel mode. It'll probably default to create a stereo track. That's fine. I prefer joint stereo personally because it's a smaller file. But like I said before, whatever floats your voiceover boat. Okay, now my options are set. So I will click OK. I'll click Save. And we're done. Except for this box here. This is where Audacity asks you for some metadata. When you buy a song on iTunes, uh, you see all of this info about the artist, the album, the track number, etc. That's what this is. It embeds itself in the file you're sending, so whoever gets it can see the info. Maybe. It won't kill you to do it, but I'm usually way too lazy to bother, so I just leave it blank. I'll click OK. And now we're done for reels. We can close the program and see that the file is now on the desktop where I chose to save it. And we can test it. And there you have it. Congratulations on creating your first MP3 with Audacity. Or place of interest as a midpoint.